Market Pulse Check. Stock market valuations are consistently in limbo. That means they're either too high or they're too low. Rarely, if ever, are markets priced just right. With all the uncertainty in the world today, let's take a deep dive on the current market conditions. As a chart you're looking at right now, despite the brief blip resulting from COVID-19, the stock markets have since gone right back to business as usual. The green columns are the growth markets, the red is the recession, going back to 1900. At the same time, however, there's still a general feeling of unease in the air. Among the unease, you have the war in Ukraine, food supply issues globally, and high inflation, all casting their shadows over the global economy. This makes it a great time to revisit some of our favorite valuation charts. After all, the data never lies. The first one we're going to look at is the S&P 500 PE ratio, or the price earnings ratio. It's the historical performance of the S&P 500 compared to the one-year forward PE earning ratios. The PE ratio compares the price, the market valuation of a company to its actual earnings. The higher the ratio, the more overvalued the company is. The lower the ratio, the more undervalued it is. And here's the chart of where we are. You can see historically where this ranks. The overall market sell-off early this year did impact the S&P 500, which it is now down 13% from its all-time highs at the end of last year. The PE ratios have fallen as a result, and the current average forward PE ratio sits currently at about 16.7 times. Over the past 25 years, this ratio has averaged 15.6 times through the various bull and bear markets. Given that the current ratio is 16.7, it's still higher than the historical average. That would suggest that the S&P 500 is still overvalued when compared to its historical trend. The second chart we're going to look at is the put to call ratio. Simply put, the ratio compares the number of put options purchased by traders on the derivatives market to the number of call options purchased. When more puts are being purchased than calls, the ratio is greater than one, and there are more traders with a negative outlook on the markets as a result. When there are more calls being purchased, the ratio is lower than one, and then there are more traders with a positive outlook on the markets if it's lower than one. Below is a chart of the put to call ratio going back to the year 2000. Note the historical average, that's the purple line in the middle, is actually 0.83, which is lower than one. In other words, historically speaking, the traders who buy the puts and calls tend to have an optimistic forecast for market performance. Now this makes sense, as most analysts believe we have yet to reach peak global economic growth. Over the past several months, the put-call ratio has hovered between its historical average and one standard deviation above the mean. This pessimistic position taken traders matches the negative performance of the markets in the same period. Recently, however, the put-call ratio has pulled back to 0.81, as indicated by the gold star that you're looking at right now on the chart towards the far right, which is just under the historical average. This means that traders are just starting to feel optimistic again about the markets. Now let's go to one of my favorite, the Buffett indicator. Yes, this indicator comes straight from the Oracle of Omaha himself, Warren Buffett. He once claimed this indicator to be probably the best single measure of where valuations stand at any given moment in a December of 2001 article in Fortune magazine. Buffett has since acknowledged the limitations of the indicator given its simplicity, but there's so much truth in simplicity. Still, it remains a very popular market indicator, particularly for the US markets. The Buffett indicator is very straightforward. It's simply the ratio of the total US stock market capitalization represented by the Wilshire 5000 index to the US GDP. So add up all the market cap of the, the 5000 index, and do a ratio of the US GDP. Ever since the global financial crisis of 2008 when Buffett indicator dipped below 60%, the indicator has consistently stayed well above 100%. While the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic saw the indicator drop back to about 100% mark, 
it shot right back up to over 200% at the end of 2021, right before the big market sell-off saw the indicator drop back to the near pre-pandemic levels. The chart shows the indicator back to its initial construction back in 1971. This is the Buffett indicator. And look, it's simple, but there's so much to take from this. We've created that horizontal stand, one standard deviation and then two standard deviations. You can see we're still hovering around three standard deviations to the historical average going back to 1971. As you can see, the Buffett indicator has historically continued to trend upwards. This means that investors are consistently looking further into the future and pricing in more blue sky potential. And considering all of the money floating around, it all makes sense. After the mega stimulus packages post-pandemic, this pushed the ratio to all-time highs. And for the mathletes, that's a three standard deviation move. Think about that for a second. Right now, with the indicator well above pre-pandemic levels, it is suggesting that investors are still looking through rose-colored glasses and awarding big premiums to equities. If investors were truly fearful today, the indicator would be at least below the pandemic levels, which they're clearly not. All right, the fourth one we're going to look at is the volatility traders. After years of slumber, the volatility trade is back on in full force. The war in Europe, rising interest rates, inflationary concerns, and stagnating economic growth are all music to the ears of bears and volatility traders. The volatility index is a gauge created through the S&P 500 option pricing expectations over the next 30 days. When uncertainty is elevated, premiums for options increase, which leads to an increase in the VIX, which is the volatility index. You can see the massive spike in March 2020 when COVID rocked the world. Global stimulus packages reduced uncertainty as the Fed had the back of the markets and thus crushed volatility. Now with interest rates rising and the Fed taking its foot off the stimulus gas pedal, uncertainty is back. The chart you're looking at is the VIX over the past five years. And in red, we highlight that the structural change is the interest rate rise. So what does this all mean? Let's put it all together. There is no crystal ball for the stock market. To anyone who thinks they've got it figured out, I truly wish them luck. And we'll send you the documents for the next big bridge purchase. The market is ever evolving and changes instantaneously. And right now there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. It is a trillion dollar game of cat and mouse. Now is the time to revisit your portfolio shopping list to figure out which investments are still worth your dollar. Or you can have the shopping list provided to you. At Katusa Research, all my subscribers know my thoughts on the market and where I'm putting my investment dollars to work. I've learned the hard lessons in tough bear markets. I've got my wish list handy and I already know what price I'd be willing to pay for each company on it. At the KRO, you'll be able to see exactly which moves I'm looking to make with the exact analysis I use to make those decisions. Stay safe. Subscribe to the KRO, which is a Katusa Resource Opportunities, to find out exactly what prices I'm buying at and what price I sell at before the trade occurs and you get to excel before I do. If you want to give your portfolio an edge, consider becoming a member and giving it a try for yourself.